Hello everybody and welcome back to the CKW, the China Korea Pro League. It's been a minute since I put one of these out, but we're going to be hopping back into this series with a spectacular lineup. This week we've got Feng Zi, Guo Qian, Xiao Shuai, and Zhuan Hun on Team China. For South Korea, we've got HBQ, HJS, Dashik, and JW4040. Our first game of the night. Spawning here in the bottom right, Dashik for Korean <clears throat> for the Korean squad. And in the bottom left. Feng Zi. I haven't actually seen Feng Zi play yet. But one thing to mention, guys, we got four Zerg players out of the eight players total. Very heavy on the Zerg lineup this week. And we're going to be seeing a lot of ZVZ here. It's like both players opting for an overpool style build with a small twist on either side. But as you can see, Feng Zi, he has the later pool, which means he's going to have a faster hatchery here at the front. He's going to have more drones. He's one drone up despite having put down that extra hatchery. And he's just going to have an overall small advantage. Six lings are about to pop here. And so these lings are going to be sent across the map. It's not a nine pool. So it's a little bit slower. We also went for lair before speed. So it's unlikely he'll actually be able to kill this hatchery. Good chance that Feng Zhe can hold on. He can prevent this hatchery from going down. And net himself a really good advantage in this game. You can see he started speed just after Dashik. His lair has not yet started. So he's probably going to have to rely on a spore only defense. Unless he can kill with lings before that point. Dashik is going to have to be very careful. He's going to start to draw back his lings. Maybe set up a perimeter here on the high ground. Because he knows that he probably won't be able to overwhelm the ling number coming out here from Feng Zhe. Feng Zhe just mining it with two on gas now. It might even be prudent to pull uh, one of these drones off that gas at this point. We're definitely not going to be able to get uh, Scourge or Mutas out in time to deal with this. We're definitely going to have to go for a uh, spore build. You can see Dashik just poking in there, seeing if he could take a fight before the speed was done for Feng Zhe, but it was pretty darn close. Going to send two lings around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. Try to make his way into the main base of Feng Zhe while this pressure is going on at his wall. Pulling a drone here to the front. Uh, actually, I think that was a rally drone. <clears throat> One rally drone. Going to be sent back to work here in the main mineral line. Spire is just about done, and it doesn't seem like Feng Zhe can break. These two links are going to uh, create a heck of a mess here, unless great block there from Feng Zhe just popping out a few extra links right as that was coming in. He's going to be able to block this from really dealing much damage, but this is a critical scout. He's seeing that more and more links are being produced. He gets in here, he sees, he hasn't actually seen behind the mineral patches, but he should be able to see that there's no Spire on the way. And it's just up to Dashik to hold on. He's just got to hold the top of this ramp until the mutas come out. And then the mutas combined with the lings should be able to stop any further lings from getting into this main. Oh, not able to do that. One ling here just kind of chilling uh, to the south. Not sure what that's all about. I'm gonna go ahead and bring these mutas to bear. But how many drones can be killed before that happens? I think it will be just one drone going down in this mineral line, but more lings are coming. This is going to start to spiral out of control here. If he loses more and more drones, he's not going to be able to leave his base with his mutas, and he won't be able to produce with all of his larvae. You can see there's already a bank of larvae here, two larvae, which he can't utilize. And still more lings coming in and trying to get damage done 
Four mutas are now out, but spores are on the way. I think that Fangza is in a good spot here, having bought enough time with those lings. And he's going to continue to sprinkle lings in towards the natural. Meanwhile, trying to kill this overlord. It's a great opportunity to run back into the main. Try to get some more damage here on a few drones. Some lings are being hidden. It seems like Dashik does not want to try to drone out of this. He's going to keep making lings and try to go all in. And as long as Fangzi... Oh, wow, well, this is perfect. Creep Colony here. That's going to be a sunken in a moment. As long as he just keeps making units. I don't think there's any way for Dashik to win at this point. He's only got four drones left. He's lost too much. Didn't take a good enough trade on the ramp. He's going to allow, or he's going to try and get these links to run by, but great blocking here. He's even going to pull the drones to try and help out with that blocking, making sure that these links can't run by into the main base is the most important thing. These links are all going to die, and as soon as the links die, I think we're just about out of options. And there it is. GG. Fangzi takes one home for the Chinese squad. We've got two rounds, or possibly three rounds to get into today, guys. It's a best of seven in round one, a best of seven in round two and then a potential final, uh, which will be just a single uh, decider match. Couldn't think of the word of it there for a second, but we're going to go into game number two here, guys. First match of round one goes to the Chinese squad. Ace match was the word I was thinking of for round number three. If we have both teams tied up, at the end of round two. The randomizer here has spoken. Our game number two is gonna be Juan Hoon versus HJS. Juan Hoon spawning here in the top left. Let's go ahead and change that color. Not a big fan of brown. HJS down here in the bottom right. HJS, a very skilled Zerg player. Not uh, someone we typically see when casting on this channel. Not someone we see in KCM or uh, in the SSL, but a strong contender nonetheless. Someone who we could look forward to see in the ACS, the Challenger series. Someone who is by their own right a very strong player. An up-and-comer, as sometimes we like to call them. Natural here gonna get thrown down at 12. Kind of a greedy build here from HGS to start out. We have a forge. There's a potential for a cannon play behind the mineral line. But taking a little bit too much damage on this probe. A second probe. That might be for a cannon rush. Let's see if Juan Hoon is willing to do it here. We're on fighting spirit. Already drones behind the mineral line. HGS is completely aware of the potential. Neither of these pro drones have been damaged because he pulled the drone that was damaged back into the mineral line. There it is. And pulled a fresh, healthy drone to the front. Making sure that he can block this. No problem. As the spawning pool finishes up here, there's no real way to get a cannon done. So... HJS just going to work towards his third base. Perfectly blocked. Any sort of cannon aggression from Juan Hoon. And he's just going to throw down his Nexus back at home. He didn't build anything. He just had two probes off the line. Uh, similar to HJS who he had like two, three drones off the line during that anyway. So I think all of that evens out pretty well. See if any lings are going to pop out here. Just two. And Juan Hoon is delaying his cannon by a lot. He's already got the gateway finishing. And I think he might be just daring enough to build a Cybernetics Core before he starts the Cybernetics Core and a Zealot. That is kind of crazy, guys. This is a Forge uh, Expand Opener. Oh, he gets a drone. Oh, man. I just talked up HGS quite a bit, and he loses a drone to one probe. Scouting his main. 
when there are lings on the field. That's pretty insane. Caster's curse here, guys, but... Looks like Cybernetic Core going to finish up here in a moment. First Zealot is out on the field. A cannon will start, but he has delayed this a lot. He's really slowed down this cannon to get his tech going a lot faster. Ooh, Citadel. Interesting. Are we going to have the plus one started? 420. There it is. 418. He starts the plus one. It's been spotted. This is a Zealot timing attack. No other way to slice it. This is what we're getting. The zealot timing attack. Get the pylon here in the main. We're going to throw down four gateways or three gateways here in the main. Total of four. Build a ton of zealots and try to get this attack going as soon as possible. Wow, he starts the speed upgrade pretty quickly. Usually you want to have the attack upgrade and the speed finishing at the same time, but he's going to start that a little bit earlier. And I don't know how this is going to play out. Quite a few lings are being made. Back at home, there's a spire on the way. More drones are popping out. We're actually almost even on workers at this point. Overlord is flying away. A little bit worried about the potential of that Corsair coming out and killing it. So maybe he hasn't fully figured out what this is yet. We need more gateways at this point. I need to start pumping up those Zealot numbers. Halfway done. On the plus one. Over halfway done on this uh, Citadel. Where are these extra gateways? This doesn't very work very well if you don't have gateway numbers. You need a lot of zealots uh, to suddenly come out and just put a huge amount of pressure on the Zerg play. A Stargate now? Well, that doesn't make any sense. That is very confusing. There's enough lings here to just fight these zealots. Even if they have speed, if they don't have plus one, you can just surround the... the Zealots and be pretty okay. I'm gonna go ahead and run back home. I guess there's not quite enough with these two extra zealots as well. Sunken Colony is gonna finish up in the third base. Sunken here at the natural as well. Zealots are gonna go for the drones over here at the third. Start to hit the Sunken Colony. There's the Mutas coming. Just sending in the zealots here, leaving a couple on the ramp to block the incoming lings potentially, but he's actually not gonna send lings in. I'm gonna leave the lings back at home in the natural while cleaning this up with the mutas. How many drones have actually been killed? I don't think a huge amount have gone down. It's been pretty minimal damage uh, sustained by HJS, and he's got his evolution chamber. He has his hydralis den. He's pretty much ready to begin this switch into hydras. And behind this double stargate, that's so interesting. That is so interesting. I would never expect to see something like this. If I was playing on the ladder, here comes one Muta gonna fly in. Beautiful scout here for HDS. Very smart play here from him. Oh, a little bit confused about what this build is actually, what it actually is, what, what's gonna be coming here at him. And I, I really respect the decision. I think that's such a good move. Just send one Muta in. He doesn't even lose the Muta. It's still at half HP. So he can add it back into the Mutalist group. But now he knows everything. He knows absolutely everything that's going on. And he can just make this instant switch into mass Hydra production. Try to keep his overlords alive. Get that overlord speed on the way. He knows it's going to be... A good number of Zealots and then a bunch of Corsairs following that up. But there's only four so far. So two uh, two pairs of Scourge, you can deal a lot of damage. You can kill two Corsairs and there's not a really great chance uh, for these Corsairs to just to fight off the Scourge in this position. Diving in on top, he's going to bait the Scourge in. The Scourge come in, but he has to run. He can't just stay here. He managed to get one Overlord, but that's all he's going to get with those Corsairs. Some more drones may end up falling, but this is a hold. 
This is an easy hold. Back at home, Mutas are thinking about flying into that natural. I'm not sure if he actually went in and got a couple of kills or not. Seems like there's, you know, one or two kills on each of these, which is probably those zealots from earlier. Uh, must not have dove in with those, but now up to 36 workers. Has a pretty decent number of hydras on the field. Can start to get back into that work of production. Go up to 45. And really pump off of six hatcheries. He's only got three hatcheries so far. He's about to throw down. Or he's only got five hatcheries so far. He's about to throw down a third hatchery at this base. Not quite able to do it just yet. But he will get it down now. And so hit six hatchery hydras on the way. It's in the works. Diving in with these mutas now. Going to go after some probes two three probes is nice get some value out of these mutas while they're still relevant in this game five corsairs are out now and so everything's going to be pushed back pretty heavily no more corsairs being made back at home kind of an interesting way to play suddenly making a huge amount of corsairs and then just completely halting on that production after going for the early zealot bust you can see that he's trying to play non-standard to throw off hjs he's trying to catch him but he hasn't been too successful so far hjs has been on top of everything and we are getting to a pretty high worker count overall for john Hoon. but will he be able to secure his third Will he be able to hold this down? It's just been spotted now by the Mutalist flying up here to 12 o'clock. He doesn't quite have six hatch Hydra production and his plus one is quite late. We've already got plus one plus one. I'm really liking John Hoon's position actually. Oh, okay, never mind. Plus two just started. So with plus two on the way, it's not as bad as I first suspected. We have a, a cannon up here on the high ground. A second cannon about to finish with zealots on the ramp. It's just a little bit too hard to pressure that. Even though there's no storm available up there. Well, there is now. Yeah, you're not going to be able to break through. Coming up in towards this natural. Wanting to put on a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, taking his fourth base and switching things up into lurker. I think a prudent maneuver here from HJS. Realizing that he's probably not going to be able to get up any of these ramps. This is one of the hardest parts about Fighting Spirit. is breaking any of these bases. These high grounds are so hard to get up into. You never want to waste a bunch of units trying to break one of these. If you go ahead and throw away a big army trying to run up a ramp... Uh, then your other bases might be exposed. There might be an opportunity for Protoss to come across the map and, and break one of your high ground bases or maybe just go straight into your natural. Gonna set up a containment on Jan Hoon. Pretty good storm there, killing a lot of Hydras. He just traded about five Hydras or six Hydras for one or two Zealots. Not the greatest trade in the world, but now setting up this Lurker Containment. You can set up a Lurker Containment at the bottom of this ramp and right here, which is very hard to break out of. This is a, a difficulty for Protoss players uh, on this map. Just getting out of a Containment once it's been set up in the front like this is pretty difficult. Throw down a couple of Storms here. He's trying to bust out before this is fully set up and operational he's opened a pathway down to the south he could try to move out that direction but instead he's just going to back up to the mouth of this bridge the entrance of the bridge and throw down a few more storms as the hydras try to come up and get some kills on these dragoons he's trading quite well although john hoon is not macroing as well as he should you can see only one zealot in production while 10 hydras 11 hydras are being made then 1500 minerals in the bank yeah a little bit of a slip there from john hoon and hjs might be able to overcome him and keep him contained because of that slip john hoon two three four five six seven eight nine ten gateway production he shouldn't have 1500 minerals in the bank 
We can pump out a lot of Dragoons, a lot of Zealots, and just bust our way out of this position. Even an 11th Gateway on the way, realizing that he's uh, slipped up a little bit in his macro. He needs some more pr production facilities so he can make use of all this mineral income he's got. Adding on some more cannons over at this base as well, making sure that that's you know, as difficult to break into as possible. Some Hydras on this side will block these Zealots from making a run by. Trying to get out on that map. Fourth base is now operational. Fourth extractor means more lurkers can be made. No transition into Hive just yet. If John Hoon breaks out of this containment, very good chance that he'll be able to win this game, but it's going to be tough. That's a lot of lurkers. That's also some Scourge here. Ready to snipe these observers. Hydras ready to snipe observers. And gun down Dragoons if they get into a bad position. Oh my god, John who slipped out a probe. Oh, I hate this so much, guys. I can't even begin to explain how annoying this is. We've got one probe out on the map, and it managed to find its way into the top right-hand corner. He hid that probe from I don't know how long ago. It's sitting up here just building a nexus. And now that whatever six cannons are done on that high ground, it's unbreakable. HJS will have to take this into the long game. He doesn't have a choice. We are going to get probes up here. Can send like a, even the shuttle. You can start shuttling probes over there. Uh, we haven't seen the shuttle out just yet, but it's just about time to start adding in that tech. Get some uh, reavers out as well. And this containment, exactly what HJS is trying to do, just keep... John Hoon contained uh, is not really worth anything if there's a probe out on the map building bases and you know taking more expansions it's actually taking all of his attention to keep this containment going and he's not spending the time to continue to expand or to check for expansions of John Hoon we'll see when he actually finds out about this so far John Hoon not doing a great job of pushing out he's really losing a lot every time he tries to push forward there's so many dragons in this army He's having a hard time getting the Templar to the front, though, to throw down the storms that he needs to push back the Hydras as they come forward to snipe the, the Dragoons, though. So, more cannons going to be added on this high ground. Of course, Templar up here. Here comes an Overlord. This is when John Hoon spots the base, and his heart just sinks. I know this feeling. I know exactly this feeling. Oh, the probes! Wait, what? Are you just going to run the probes? Dude, that's so many probes. It just went down. That was insanity. He gets four probes through. Was that really worth it? I can't say for sure, but he's going to start to mine over there in the top right-hand corner, which is what he needs right now. Plus two, plus two is done. We've only got plus two attack on these Hydras, but they're still holding up pretty, pretty well. The Dragons are having a hard time getting any good surface area. You really want to have a, a concave with the Dragoon so that more of them can be firing. If only a couple of them are firing at a time, it's pretty hard to break out of a spot like this. He still has an Observer, so he can still come forward and you know just do a little damage here and there. Pick off a Lurker or two. Cast a couple of Storms. Try to push this out. But, oh my god, more probes going to be transferred here. There, a couple of them are actually going to make it. Okay, one's going to make it, it seems. Perhaps, potentially, yeah, it will make it up there. Kind of crazy to see him just sending, just sending probes. Such an ape maneuver. And eventual sacks on the way, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This is something that I'll do, I, I would do as well. If we find a base like this, like, oh wow, you've got six cannons on high ground. Well, ventral sacks time, we're just going to make a bunch of uh, dropper lords and try to... Try to break that base. I know that you don't have a, you know, cannons are spread around the entirety of the base. This DT is going to get in and get a lot of damage, it looks like. So many drones can go down to that. Trying to push out right now. And that's going to be taking a lot of HGS's attention. Plus these Zealot, zealot Rumbys doing some damage at the same time. That DT has seven kills now. And continuing to rise, getting so much economic damage. Onto HJS, John Hoon. Is he actually going to win this game? He's starting to push out here, and HJS is lacking a little bit in the defenses. He's going to run forward with some more Lurkers, but I tell you what, 
This is looking like a John Hoon breakout. He's just about through all of the army here. He pushes everything back. He's done so much time. 14 kill, 15 kills on that DT. Is finally cleaned up by HGS. He has another base in the bottom left. He has a base at the bottom center. But none of that matters because of this expansion over here. If we were just seeing, you know, John Hoon breaking out, out on three bases right now at 19 minutes, he would be desperately looking for a fourth base. He would be, you know, scrambling to get another base online. But since he managed to sneak that one probe up into top right, he's doing fantastic. He's even got an Archon down here. It's got 12 kills, 13 kills now. It's doing even more damage as DT down in the bottom or in the center right. Maybe able to kill a bunch more units. Yeah, more Hydras going down. This is an absolute crazy amount of damage just coming out from these Archons down here in the bottom left. This DT has done so much work. That's finally going to be cleared out, but this is too much chaos. HJS is going to lose this game, man. 26 kills on this Archon. Holy crap. Absolute massacre in the bottom left. He even kills off the hatchery, and HGS is just about out of gas. This is the real problem with going for a containment play. If your opponent manages to sneak out, the game is just about over. All the drones go down here at center right. He's going to drop on top of this, but... Yeah, a few good storms. He's got plenty of storms remaining. Some of these Templar have a huge amount of energy. As long as he kills all the Hydras, nothing else matters. The probes don't really matter. He can transfer more probes from over here. He just needs to get rid of those Hydras and keep this base alive, and he should be fine. Some Lurker eggs going to be made. Trying to get uh, tactful here. HJS doing the best that he can with what he's got, but... He certainly doesn't have much left. 82 supply and only 32 workers. He's bringing the workers back to try and take over uh, and actually work at this base to try and get some money going. Oh man, he's actually surrounding this. He's killing a lot of these Templars. He's got to focus down the Templar before they get their storm. Finally, HJS or John who brings his attention back to this army, but it's all already gone. Most of the army is dead. And so it looks like HJS is still alive, but... He's kind of a zombie at this point. He's got almost nothing left. He's a walking dead. Hardly any drones, just 30 drones. To his name and such a massive deficit in supply as well. Some hydras are going to be lifted, airlifted here into this space potentially, but there's a lot of cannons that have been made. There's still Templar defending this location. And John Hoon just has so many options for where he can attack. He doesn't have to attack high ground. He doesn't have to attack, you know, bottom center where there's a bunch of lurkers. He can just attack straight into the natural and probably just kill. HJS doesn't have enough to defend his natural. He's dropped some hydras into this main and he's going to make some lurkers. But John Hoon's aware of that and he's just going to come over here, clear all of this out. And this is probably going to be the end of the game. Big storm on all of these Hydras. The Lurker eggs are going to get massacred as well. GG is called HJS. Taps out. Kind of an insane game there, guys. John Hoon making it wild. Making it wacky with his build order and then his run buys in the later game. The DTs coming from this gateway. The DTs that were trickling over here to this base did an insane amount of damage so much economic disruption was happening to hjs during that game uh, had he dealt with those a little bit more efficiently had he scouted top right a little bit sooner he would have easily been able to contain uh john hoon here not easily but you know he had a very strong contain the only reason that this contain broke was because so much economic damage was going on in the back line that he wasn't able to reinforce he had his units running around chasing down dts rather than reinforcing that position and john hoon takes the victory and once again putting another point on the board for team china game number three now xiao shui in the top left hand corner red zerg versus his opponent the 4000th 
and 40th Jehovah's Witness to knock on your door this season. They're annoying, but you've got to admire the persistency. JW, 40-40. Going to be starting with a wall in here on Radeon. Oh, not Radeon. Retro. Excuse me. And Retro... I mean, this map's been out for a really long time. Still strikes me as a fighting spirit map. I said that right when the map came out. I still feel like it's reminiscent of that map. However, it seems a lot more balanced now that things have quieted down, that we've had this map in the map pool for a long time. It really does feel like this is a... A map that can stand the test of time, similar to that Fighting Spirit map. One thing to mention here is that the back of the natural, the gas geyser, is pointing towards the Zerg player. He's going to be able to get his overlord over the natural right away. And we'll know that there's no 8 racks coming or anything crazy like that. So, bit of an advantage for Shaoshui in this early game. Also... As time goes on, if we opt to go into a battle cruiser play, the gas geyser is not going to be too accessible being over on this right hand side. Coming across and getting over to this high ground is going to be a little bit difficult, but the main base is a straight shot for drops. We want to just send drops straight across the map. We can have our army uh, come out, cut off. Uh, stuff from getting in this direction and we can drop into this main base so drops may be strong here for JW but the battle cruiser play will not be as good plus he'll have to deal with some early game harassment of course in his natural his main base a little bit less likely to get harassed right off the bat from Mutalisk but we'll see if Shaoshui even wants to go for something like that where Beginning our layer here with no lings in production is completely foregoing ling production here. And Xiao Shui is getting into a spot where he can see any direction that the Marines move out. He's going to know about it before they even get to the middle of the map. So that's pretty good. No lings again. Still no lings here for Xiao Shui. He's really cutting corners super, super hard. Do his best to crank out this extra hatchery very early on. Look at how quick this hatchery is for the 2.5 hatch. That is a very fast hatchery. This is well ahead of when a normal player will be getting their uh, macro hatchery down. He's going to drop his spire. Right about the four minute mark. Here comes that second gas. Perfectly optimized so far with no links being produced. This is not how you want to play as a Terran player. You do not want to allow the Zerg to just get away with everything. But what is JW doing back at home? He started a plus one upgrade and he's just sitting back. Going to be getting his academy here. Oh, there it is. Academy just underneath the map. And now with Ling's out, going to be chasing this SCV around. There's full scouting available for JW, but still not an optimal situation, I would say. We've allowed the Zerg player to just macro uh, completely unhindered. A lot of modern Terran play centers around pressure in the early game with naked Marines. Moving across the map with those naked Marines, forcing a bit of Ling's to be produced, forcing a bit of fear from the Zerg player, uh, but that's just not the case this game. Joshua has been able to get away with anything. He has a lot of minerals though, and I don't see any purpose to having this much minerals at this point in the game. Um, we should have a drone in top right, able to take a hatchery. But you can see it's about floating about 300 minerals this entire time and doesn't have a drone ready to take the base. Is he going to take 12? Uh, because it's a little bit more expedient. No, he's going to send over to the top right hand corner. And I got to say, this feels like a mistake. We should have this already on the way, but 
He's going to send it out now. It's going to arrive uh, a little bit off time. More drones being made. Send those to mining. I've already got full saturation though. It begs the question, what are these drones for at this time? No ling speed. He's cut so many corners. He should be able to sneak out something. What that is exactly, I have no idea. We're coming in with seven mutilists to the natural or the main base of JW. Already about four workers have been picked off. Marine Medic Army is moving out on the map. Is he going to wander into this? Ooh, good play there by JW. Getting in the path of likely retreat for these mutas and catching one of them. And now he's going to be pushing up towards this top right. Giving it some trouble. This is the problem with taking this uh, third base so late is that we don't really have the extra larva. Or the ability to throw down sunken colonies at this base. So he's going to have to hold this off with pure mutilus. You can see only mutilus in production now. He finally gets Ling speed. But has no Lings to try and battle this marine medic group with. The marine medic group's made its way across the map. Kind of unhindered. Which means it's going to be able to ball up and fight. What you like to do is, as a Zerg player, is catch some marines that are coming across the map. Uh, when they're a little bit more spread out like this. You don't want to take these fights when the Marines are completely balled up. But I think that's what he's going to be forced to do uh, here in a moment. If he doesn't want to lose that third base. Diving in. Taking some pot shots. There's only three medics and they're going to be running out of energy soon. Take a look here. Very low on that energy. This one actually has a pretty decent store. But coming forward to try and take these fights. It's not going well for Xiao Shuai. He's losing quite a bit. Eventually, I do believe he will run this over. He's certainly got the production to kill that army. But how much is he going to lose by killing this off? And will the the hatchery be focused? A lot of mutilists getting uh, targeted during this fight. Pretty good control here overall for JW. But he loses not only his army, but also the reinforcements that were coming to join up with this. So... Pretty big losses there for JW. He does not kill the hatchery. And so this game will continue on. Xiao Shuai transferring a bunch of drones over towards that top right. He's got Lurker on the way. He has Hive coming as well. We don't see an evolution chamber here just yet. But that should be in the works for Xiao Shuai if he wants to continue on in this game. There is the evolution chamber coming up now. He can start that plus one armor soon. But we've already got 1-1. One, one. Uh, about to complete for these marines so they're going to be able to trade pretty darn well against anything that Xiao Shuai pulls out Amita's here in the main seven of them doing a little bit of harassment damage killing about three workers once again meanwhile up in the top right emergency sunken colonies being thrown down because this little bio ball that's heading out on the map doesn't really have an answer at this point. We need lurkers uh, in the mix here if we want to keep this alive. Lurker upgrade is just about to finish, but that still means there's going to be some time before the lurkers are out of their eggs. Going to make that lurker egg in the front. He fails to do so. Those two sunken colonies finish up at the perfect time. The mutas are going to dive in, but there's not that many of them. Okay, the lings are doing a great job, though. And the two sunken colonies plus the lings... And Mita's able to hold off this attack. It was a very close call, though. Very close call indeed. JW just about breaking through and ending this hatchery once and for all. The Lurker in the top right has hatched. Lurker's here in the natural as well. We're switching over into that this next period of the game. This next uh, part is going to be critical for JW. Can he break in somewhere? Can he get some drops going? Can he get some momentum in this game and throw off Xiao Shuai, who's still working with a pretty decent economy? 49 drones is quite a lot at this point in the game. Nearly 50 drones here on three bases. He's going to get 
is the Nidus Canal connected to the top right. He will have very soon some defilers coming out. He just now started consume though. Consume is a little bit slow here for Shao Shui. He's gonna have to rely on masses of army to try and push this back. We have two lurkers in a stack, but one of them is about to go down. He needs to pop more lurkers through this Nidus as soon as possible. Get them to the front before this bus comes. Here we go. Lurker's gonna burrow. Diving in with the Marines. That's quite a lot of Marines with the Lurker. Spines are doing amazing work here. One more Hydra gonna come out to the front. Lurker Egg is thrown down. One Lurker gonna be targeted. One more Sunken Colony finishes. This Lurker, can it hold the line here at the back? It's just barely gonna get picked off here and just two or three Marines is all that remains. These Science Vessels, unfortunately, kept here at the front. One of them will die. He should actually be able to target this other one as well. Yeah, 17, 16 HP on that. I'm a little bit surprised to see Xiao Shui not target that down. Just go after it. You definitely want to pull the science vessels out of a spot like that. Uh, preserving those is huge. They're not really helping in the battle aside from giving you a bit of vision uh, and detection, which obviously the commsats could compensate for if you wanted to pull back and keep them alive. This science vessel is just, just a couple of hits away from death at this point. And the fourth base is now up. Gas is about to be taken. We're still at 48 drones here for Shao Shui. A third base is coming up. Factory has landed, but we haven't started production on tanks just yet or vultures. Either one uh, could be helpful in the upcoming transition ultras are going to be popping out soon we've already seen like two to three failed busts from jw so he doesn't really have a lot on the map at the moment his links are going to get in here start to kill off some scvs four or five scvs are going to go down all of a sudden two lurkers in the natural got a good cluster of science vessels at the front could pop back through, try to hide this defiler, but instead going to consume and look for a plague. Not able to find it there. Still killing units. Wow, Lings actually came up and maybe killed some Marines here as well. And the SCVs are going to have to run for it. Let's take a look at these upgrades. Plus two is done. Just plus one armor on these Lings. Going after the command center. This is taking quite a bit of damage. Some... Drops are going to come into the main base, but meanwhile, this command center is maybe going to be lost here. Okay, he does save it. Managing to repair after lifting off the drops here. Not working out too well for JW. Just really trying to get in there, but plagues are being traded back, and the army on the high ground is a little bit too strong. JW, JW not making any headway in this main base. May have to switch to pressuring the top right instead. Still has those dropships as far as I can tell. Uh, at least one of them is still alive. And the command center down here is going to be put under pressure once again. The marines are going to have to retreat. Eventually some more will be sent down. Some reinforcements going to be sent to this area. One lurker under an overlord here at the third base. That's definitely not enough to hold on. So we'll have to see a lot of this stuff transferred through here shortly if he wants to keep this position. Coming in. Gonna go ahead and start irradiating in this main base. There's another defiler popping out. A lot of these units are ready to jump through the Nidus at a moment's notice. Another irradiate going down. We've got a simultaneous drop here. But nice Dark Swarm. Gonna keep most of these... Uh, workers alive at least. The hatchery is still a bit under threat. If he goes after the hatchery, he could deal quite a bit of damage. Some lings coming down here. Those should be blocked by the... Oh, there we go. He managed to pick off that dropship. They're getting a science vessel as well. Another science vessel goes down. Excellent defense here from Shao Shui. I think he's going to hold no problem. With the lurker underneath the dark swarm... You cannot break through this with just pure medic marine, so he will have to be backing off from this spot. Plus three armor is done. We're about to hit that critical plus four. Let's see. 
Only two attack, and he hasn't started plus three. Oh no, JW missing the plus three marine upgrade. He's probably gonna have to tap out here soon, um, considering he doesn't have that. And there's plus three armor. Plus three armor is gonna be finished before plus three attack for JW, even on upgrades at the moment. He's gonna try one more time to try and break through one of these spots, but he loses all of his vessels because he's too busy paying attention to six o'clock. Coming into the natural with no lurkers. A few just gonna pop out now. Maybe he can bust through this. It's a little bit rough. Ling's coming from behind. Ultra's in the front. Lurker is underneath. Completely surrounded and taken out there. Another win on the board for China, guys. Three in a row now. They're cleaning house in this week of CKW. Who can bring it back? We've only got, I think, one more Korean player that hasn't been brought out yet. That's HBQ. He's going to be going up against Guo Qian. That's coming up next. Game number four with HBQ spawning in top center. Guo Qian in the bottom left. I looked up what Guo Qian means. It's actually modest. Modesty. Kind of rem reminiscent of modesty from the Korean scene. You guys remember him, a KSL player. Was pretty successful back in the day, STX player. I don't think he ever competed in the ASL though. Kind of dropped off uh, around the time that KSL finished. And Though he's not this player, he is a commentator, caster in the Chinese scene, a streamer as well. So kind of one of those, you know, C type of players, maybe more like a shuttle uh, for the Chinese scene. Well-known guy uh, with a big personality who uh, also competes at a pretty high level in China. So. We're gonna see how he holds up against HBQ. Uh, I don't know the full backstory for HBQ, but we have seen him a few times in the CKW. Seems like a very strong Terran player. Definitely not to be underestimated. Let's see what Guo Chen can do though. I'm more interested in this guy who we've never seen before. And also he's a caster, so I'm, I'm, I got a little bias there. I wanna see uh, what he's capable of. Gonna be getting in here, finding HBQ before HBQ can find him. HBQ kind of forgetting about his SCV here for a minute. And getting his first Marine out to just push away this uh, pesky probe while getting his factory online. Uh, I've been casting quite a bit of Protoss versus Terran recently. I I'm starting to get a bit more of a sense of it. It's... um. Something I've always struggled with. I played Terran a long time back and I never quite understood the matchup. I always had a really hard time uh, really getting anything done against a Protoss player. I always felt like I was behind from the very early stages of the game and I couldn't really figure out what the what the opponent was doing until I had commsats and then even then or at that point I felt like I was usually behind and um <laughs> just having a hard time just general general struggling is how I will uh qualify that experience but I'm starting I feel like I'm starting to get a bit more of the hang of the ebb and flow in this matchup and I hope that's starting to f to show through in my casting a bit more. I'll continue to study up and, and continue to practice and, and learn a little bit more about this matchup because I do want to uh, be competent in all the matchups and have some insight into everything that's going on. I'm, I'm obviously much more insightful when it comes to Zerg matchups, but I think that's par for the course. Anyone who you know doesn't play a certain matchup is going to be less knowledgeable about that uh, unless they're actively studying and trying to to learn more so 
that's what we're going to be trying to do we've got one vulture out on the map that's going to actually force the dragoon to retreat we don't don't want to leave this out on the map and risk the vulture getting around behind and laying down mines in the retreat path so he's going to send that pretty close to home at least to a point where he can see if there's going to be a, a, a vulture getting behind that uh, but keeping close enough here so that he can also have some vision on any sort of push that might be coming and indeed we are getting a push right now bit of a probing push here from hpq is just going to come in with three marines and one tank try to shove back this dragoon and get some mines placed right out in front of the map or right out in front of the protoss base as soon as he sees four dragoons i think prudent maneuver just turn away not uh not a good idea to take a fight with these four goons they are definitely going to win against the small number of units that have been brought forward by go chen so we will have a oh there it is observatory observatory is done as soon as the observers out this army is going to be out of time so he'll have to run that away vulture over at the third just kind of chilling here he's waiting for a probe we'll wait i guess until the dragoons come and kill this and then once the dragoons pull away he'll come back up with the vulture and try to snag that probe any delay that you can do on the third base is is massive massive uh for any protoss or for any terran player just slowing down that protoss a tiny bit is going to change the game completely so he's coming out with the dragoons he's made quite a lot his uh, nexus is going to be delayed a bit that little gambit there the little uh gamble of leaving the vulture down here in the corner is not going to pay off instead he's going to <clears throat> excuse me find that vulture clear it out and now can get to work on these mines he's produced a lot of dragoons on three gateways it seems like he was a bit scared of that pressure coming from hbq and you know hbq is not uh he wasn't really going all in or or trying to put on a huge amount of pressure there he just wanted to see what was coming uh, get a view of the reaction from Gochen and then slow down the third base a little bit. And I think he did that very, very well. I feel like Gochen is being a little bit outplayed in this game. Maybe not fully understanding what was happening with HBQ, who is now sitting back at home. He hasn't lost anything uh, aside from a single vulture. Uh, he's been pretty greedy. And getting his armory up pretty early on. He's got his command center on the way, going up to four factory. And I think he'll be fine to just take a third base slightly after the third base of Guoqian and just come out here, try to try to hold this position. This is very standard stuff for a Terran player on this map. It's very difficult to break down these ramps if you have a very well set up spot uh, between these two bases. And once you're on three base, then you can set up in a really powerful way, take this high ground and try to push for the high ground of your Protoss opponent. And once that high ground is contained, there's not a lot of things that the Protoss can do at that point. Now, one of the risks on this map, one of the problems with this map is that your main base has so many different routes, so exposed to drops like this. However, I think HBQ has done basically a perfect job of setting up for something like this. Even though he can't see the shuttle coming in because of the high ground. He's got mines. He's got turrets everywhere. He's even got a turret next to the siege tank in the mineral line, which is amazing. If you see the, if you see this turret uh, from the periphery and you just decide to fly over, you will end up dying to that second turret. So everything will have to drop out and then the tank can clean up the, the reaver from there. So I think it's a very nice setup for HBQ. And Guochen's not even going to try to dive in. He's going to wait until this third base starts to come up. It's at nine minutes. This is a very fast third. I think HPQ may be winning this game. We might actually see a Korean victory because 
Guochen is is kind of slow here. Just going to set up his fourth base now. He's pumped out a lot of units, and it doesn't feel like he's ready to to actually break. Like, if he was just pumping non-stop units and just coming in and trying to bust like a best style Protoss bust, that would be one thing. But I feel like he's middle of the roading it, and HBQ is just full on going for macro play, just a huge macro engine. And macro, just, macro plays beat middle of the road plays every time. Middle of the road play is good against a cheesier play. Like an aggressive play will usually l lose to a middle of the road play, but of course that's just uh, not always the truth. Sometimes that that's not the case. He's gonna try and dive in here now, but you can see he just doesn't have the army. This dive is kind of crazy. Wo Chen just going to get completely denied. He dropped the Reaver <clears throat> right in the face there, and it got absolutely knocked out immediately. Uh, did manage to get a few Vultures, but that's about it. And now Guo Chen's on the retreat. It, he didn't have this giant gateway explosion on three base like we might see from Best, where he's just going to absolutely run you over. Um, <clears throat> and... Thus, that play that's kind of best-esque coming down uh, onto the low ground and just trying to bust him on three bases doesn't work at all. And now Guo Chen is having a super hard time. He's finally going to get uh, some Templar out. He might have Storm by now. He's adding on some more gateways, and he will eventually get into a large army, but he's behind 15 supply. So many factories coming up in this main. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine factories. And a starport now going to come up. So he will be ready to uh, build his plus two attack uh, once that plus one armor is done. Sending the probes a little bit too early here as well. His probes are going to long distance mine. And so, you know, Guochen is just something's a bit off. Something is a bit off for him. You can absolutely tell he has Storm. Or he ha he doesn't have Storm. Excuse me. Storm is on the way. Oh, boy. Storm in the production tab means he can't fight. He absolutely cannot fight right now. If he just throws his army into the army of HBQ without Storm, he will lose. So, HBQ pushing out is a really scary thing for... Guo Chen right now. He has to be careful. He has to buy time and slow down this army. HBQ, everything on siege is going to start to move forward. He's grabbing all of his units. He's building a second armory in the front. Kind of funny, right between the natural and the third. Unlikely to get dropped or uh, recalled upon, but there's no recall in this game, so it's not that big of a deal. Zealot's Dragoon's gonna retreat to the high ground. And Tanks will be taking this middle. Still buying time. He's almost there. Storm is just about done. Is he gonna be able to take this fight? Here we go. Zooming out now with all of the Zealots coming in from the bottom side. Most of them are gonna get knocked out by the uh, Vultures that have come in. And wait a second. I didn't even see a single Storm, did you? Where are the Storms here from Gochen? The storm was completely missed. Didn't even land a single one. I don't know if that was just fantastic targeting by HBQ or was that a terrible control from Gochian. Either way, HBQ is going to run this fight over. Has so much left here after the dust settles. He's going to completely take over the high ground. Gochian taps out. GG. Jeez. That sure went sideways quickly. But yeah, I had the feeling like Guo Chen was going to lose that game pretty much from the beginning. The way that he was uh, expanding and reacting to what HBQ was doing was not quite on the money. Let's see. Let's see what happened with this drop. Where are the storms? That one dies immediately. That one gets targeted immediately as well. Good targeting there with the 
uh, vultures and tanks. And then this one coming from the south just does nothing. Ouch. That is rough. Just controlling the fight here. HBQ not macroing behind this. But he knows that he's going to win. As long as he controls properly and doesn't allow big storms to land on his clumps of tanks. He knows he can take this fight. And he can start the macro cycle after this battle has been won. So you see... Right now, the macro cycle begins once again. Everything came down to that fight. And so HBQ paying full attention, sniping down those Templar, pushing the issue here with the remaining tanks and vultures. Well played by him and Korea as a game on the board. Okay, now that all four matches have been complete, going back to the randomizer to replay one of these, it's Xiao Shui versus JW4040. And it's match point, of course. One more win for the Chinese squad. And they will have round one taken care of. Let's see if Xiao Shui can close it out here, or will JW be able to bring his team one more step closer to a comeback in this series? Got Xiao Shui down here in the bottom right. We are on Citadel, by the way. So about a season ago is when these were played. Citadel was a pretty decent map. I, I was a pretty big fan of it. I liked it. I think it was a little bit Terran favored, but... In TVZ and... T, uh, or ZVT and ZVP, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't too mad about it. I thought it was a decent map. Had some fun games on this map. Had some crazy games on this map. It was pretty scary if the Protoss managed to get another main base, just like on any map. Can be scary, but on this map, it felt especially dangerous. <laughs> A lot of Protoss players just wanted to, you know, cannon up an area like this and put a couple of Templar there and start making Reavers and just sit. Which could be a real problem. And it led to some, you know, 40, 50 minute games uh, for me on the ladder, but. That's probably not what we're going to see. Not going to see something like that for sure in this game. Instead, JW is going to get in here. It's kind of a noob style, honestly, to play like that. If your opponent is really good, they'll just take the whole map, uh, all the other bases on the map, and grind you down or, or just get in there. Find a way to get in there. Uh, and break you if you're just going to be completely turtled on you know five bases four or five bases right it's just taking all of that space on the map and trying to defend things like drops and little run buys and stuff everywhere is going to slow you down if you're not uh, at a really really high level you know 350 apm and really keyed in then it can be a big struggle to deal with uh, harassment attempts that are going on at the same time. Waiting for that 303, 304 mark to make sure that he gets an extra larva. Xiao Shui starts his lair. And one racks fast expand here for JW. Going right into an engineering bay once again. This time he did produce two links. Not being quite as greedy this time. Xiao Shui puts out two links, but everything else is going into drones. And he does get down the rather quick hatchery once again. That third hatchery in the main. The macro hatch is going to be done quite a bit before the spire is finished. And so he's going to have a serious economy going into the, this mid game and no pressure here from JW. Just sitting back, playing his game exactly as last time. Now four lings on the field. Let's see what Xiao Shui sees. He, he has vision over all the Marines. He knows exactly uh, how many Marines are there and where they're positioned at. So I'm surprised to see him build this many lings. Last time he didn't make this much of a commitment. And was able to crank out a much bigger economy because of that. 
Let's see if that ends up uh, hurting him or helping him in this game. He also got speed this time. So a bit of a change up from Shao Tsui, not being nearly as greedy. I'm gonna take a look at the front, pressuring the front a little bit here. And I'm gonna try to stop saying here so much. Uh, it is kind of a filler word. I know some of you guys have noticed it. Some of you guys have commented about it. It's maybe a bit of a crutch for me at this point. I'm gonna do my best not to keep saying that, but it'll take some time. It's kind of like, um, I used to say, um, way more. I still say it here and there occasionally, but I've cut down on my use of that filler word. Just trying not to replace it with a different one. So I'm going to cut down on how much I say here. Just uh, talking aloud to myself, I suppose. Letting you guys know that I'm constantly working on this thing we call casting. Trying to improve. And I appreciate your patience, support, and occasional constructive criticism is not a bad thing either. Six Mutalists are out. Seven Mutalists total making their way to the natural. Let the one shots begin. He's actually gonna switch around to the main base and this could be pretty big if he gets in here just before. Ooh, not gonna make it. Not quite going to make it. Sometimes the Terran player will build their turrets at the natural before they build their turrets at the main. Wow, a lot of SCVs are going down. Might even go after this bunker, but Marines are out on the map. And so he will have to react. Ooh, good turnaround there. A little bit scary when you're chasing the Marine, the bio, and trying to macro at the same time. Sometimes you will just wander right into that Marine stack. If you're not quick, could end up losing everything. And so he's found this Marine medic out on the field. See if he can get some pot shots. He's at least forcing the stims, and that's not nothing. That's going to take away some of the energy from these medics. Make this army a little bit less potent. He does dive in, loses one Muta. Dives in again, almost losing a second one, but getting a couple of Marines back. Forcing the stims. It's not a great idea to dive in after forcing the stim, but he's going to go for it. Whole hog diving right on top of this. Losing quite a few mutas. Some good targeting here by JW. The rest of the army will go down. I mean, that wasn't the greatest move, but at least he got rid of the full army. And he started this transition. Hydroden on the way. Queen's Nest going to follow shortly behind. I mean, it should already be... It should already, already be making. Did he Did he forget? It's a little bit... It's a little bit scary. He's making another army of Muta and Ling. Ready for this push out. There's the Queen's Nest. That's a bit late. He might have an opportunity. JW might have an opportunity to bust before Defiler comes out. Yeah, there might be a tiny window because of the lateness of that Queen's Nest. The timings are so... They're so tight when it comes to fights like this. Double Starport is done. I don't see... a Science Facility. There it is. Science Facility gonna start? And medics are being picked. So might go for this one too. There you go. He does get the medic. This is pretty good stuff from Shao Shui. His lurker aspect's about to finish. Three lurkers in the natural. Armor is about to be done though. And you cannot underestimate 
these this marine clump another medic goes down that's actually quite large that is a big deal killing off those medics because if we're gonna try to bust any amount of sunken colonies with lurkers you need medics they are the the x factor in the, these attacks that help the marines to push through the sunken colonies and uh, lurkers that might be defending diving in towards this natural is gonna go after the bunker bunker should go down picking off medics while the lings are harassing get this medic at the back nicely done harassing this some more forcing a few of these marines to return home lurkers are done in the natural he actually needs to burrow these burrow come on there we go burrow is done oh where are okay we don't we don't need to stack these it's actually better to not stack them at this point in the game we don't have vessels out yet so kind of a waste there defiler mound on the way i don't see any nidus network set up just yet some more lurkers pop out and five lurkers he shouldn't be able to break but if they were spread out a bit more i'd feel a little bit more confident that he could hold on with them stacked up like this if you get a good spread and target the lurkers one at a time with that armor plus the attack damage and only one sunken you might be able to break that could be possible oh drop is ready to come in two vessels at the front drop ships as well is he going to be able to dive this he may send the drops up to top right while going in on the natural Let's see scourge are ready for this hasn't been able to find a, a way in just yet jw gets spotted by the overlords and he turns back around is he gonna go into the main not quite yet doing some scans he sees all the scourge with that scan there's so many scourge around this main base he's completely ready for this double d matrix you need four scourge to kill one of these drop ships let's see if xiao shui is paying attention he's not and the drops will get fully into this main base that's quite a lot of marines and they're gonna be able to catch the oh the defilers they all popped out from the main oh the defilers here popping out in the wrong place at the wrong time lings and one defiler comes into this main but he didn't consume and so the next load up gonna bring some medics into the main as well he needs a consume he needs a consume he needs a consume and dark swarm where is it there it is dark swarm finally comes down one lurker gonna be targeted he will be able to hold on for now with these lurkers inside the main oh tries to run forward actually this lurker gets quite a few kills another drop with some more drop uh, more uh marines and medics coming in just one of these has anything in it which is kind of hilarious uh, but he will be able to drop behind the mineral patches two marines only though and this will get cleaned up shao shui doing a very good job he should be able to kill both of these although so he doesn't have a scourge for that second drop ship oh, he killed the drop ship that didn't have anything in it that's a little bit unfortunate holding on though that is the main point all he needs to do is just hang in there while jw is throwing army into his main and dropping endlessly as long as he's got the upgrades still rolling and he's defending everywhere eventually we will get this fourth gas online and xiao shui will have ultras to start to put the pressure back onto jw coming into this natural there's no lurkers here at all bit of an oversight we ha don't have dark swarm either just one sunken colony has he made a massive mistake he's got so many lurkers in this main base he's blocking himself with a drone dives on top 
of that Nidus Canal. The Nidus Canal goes down. These fire bats are going to go to work, picking off a lot of these drones. Two kills on that one. One kill on this one. Going after the hatchery now. Xiao Shui is breaking. Drop up in that top right-hand corner. It doesn't look like that went well, but this natural bust has worked out fantastically for JW. He's removed one of these gases for the time being. Xiao Shui cannot mine here in the natural. Oh, I'd love to see him just put down a plague on this stuff. He doesn't have plague. Oh man, there's been too much going on for Xiao Shui. He hasn't been able to pull, bring the plague to bear. Finally, everything will be cleaned up in this natural, but we are moments away from breaking. There's almost nothing left for Xiao Shui. He's starting to put things back together, adding this hatchery once again, getting his fourth gas online. He can get these drones to mine. He could put up a, a decent defense, but it's gonna be a while before he gets ultras on the field. And there's just so much time for JW to s just put on heaps and heaps of pressure. He's going to be sending battle cruisers into the main base soon. And he's triple starport battle cruiser. That is so much pressure to deal with. While you're trying to hold off everything at the same time. Two Nidus canals were built. Uh, kind of in desperation mode. Xiao Shui trying to hold the line. He needs this gas in the natural to come up. 1992 it was a good year. Uh, just after I was born, he needs to get that gas into his coffers so he can start to bring this one back. Big plague? No plague. Oh no, he didn't have energy for that. He throws away a bunch of Scourge when he desperately needs them to deal with these battle cruisers. Battle cruiser gonna eat a plague. One Mutalist comes out, but you need to combine the Mutalist with some Scourge so that they can actually get their connections. Another plague down on one or more of these battle cruisers. More Scourge on the way, but he may end up losing this Nidus Canal as well. More Scourge pop out. Can he actually finish the fight here? Pick off all of these. Oh! Just barely gets one. Dark Swarm on the drones is a great idea at this point. Does get that Dark Swarm down. But he is still struggling so hard. He finally takes out that battle cruiser, but more are on the way. Army heading up towards top right. Another base going to be thrown down center left. We're already on four bases here as JW. He's got so much economy rolling. There's not a lot of hope here for Xiao Shui. But what little hope there is, is banked upon this plus three upgrade that's coming. Plus three carapace. Oh, double fire bat. Running into this natural. Plague is a great natural counter to the D matrix. If you bring the army, or if you bring the fire bats low enough, bring them down to one HP, then it doesn't matter uh, that they have the D matrix on because still some little bits of damage can get through the D matrix. But it seems like he's broken. Xiao Shui, he's going to lose that hatchery again. And sitting on just three bases and three gases is not going to do well for him. He's just about out of mineral or out of gas at the main base. Going to remake this hatchery once again. But we are now five base economy for JW. Or about to be at least. It was a great plague on all the vessels, and they're going to be brought very, very low, but he doesn't really have any uh, anti-air to deal with this. He needs some sort of uh, a muta or something to fly in and just kill all of these science vessels. More marines are coming up, but the battle cruisers are the real problem. I'm going to pick off a last couple of science vessels, but the battle cruisers are completely unaccounted for. Do lurkers pop through? He's going to try to save this with the last... Oh no, these lurkers just flying in. They're just going to run in and die to the 
Marines, and that is it. You cannot recover from a position like this. Too much has been lost. Even that Nidus is going to fall. Some Hydras pop out, consuming his last Defiler to throw down a Dark Storm with nothing underneath it. Such a shame that he ran those Lurkers forward. Otherwise, he might have just barely been able to hold on. But with this many battle cruisers in the main base, the chances of even that being enough to keep him alive is pretty darn low. These last two vessels will go down, but everything in the main base is falling apart. Few ultras come out, more bases being thrown down. He's just taking every single base on the map at this point. JW is expanding and expanding and expanding, ex showing us a very high level of Terran in this game. Something he wasn't able to produce in his last matchup against Xiao Shuai, but really pulling it out this time. And that's it. Xiao Shuai will have to tap out. Really nothing he can do. He's kind of counter-attacking, sending in ultras, but he could shut down two bases and there would still be two more mining for his opponent. So he leaves the game. Xiao Shuai is done. JW, 187 supply at the end of that. Five battle cruisers ravaging this main base with their plus one finished. Three battle cruisers produced at a time. Dude, JW was just rolling in this game. After breaking through the naturals, just that one moment where Xiao Shuai laxed on his defense. He had too many lurkers in the main and none at this natural. JW saw it and he went for the throat, immediately breaking through. Getting in there and getting the job done. Putting another point on the board for the Korean squad. They're not quite at match point yet, but two wins to the three of China. We've got another game here coming right up. Let's jump in. Moving right along, we've got HJS versus John Hoon. John Hoon, I believe that means fighting spirit. Uh, just a throwback to that map, I guess. Maybe a, a shout out to the to the old school. Sending the pro back means that we're probably going to get a gateway out of John Hoon and a nine pool here for HJS. Interesting choice. He's going to be able to put on a lot of pressure. John Hoon going to struggle to keep himself alive. Lucky he doesn't go for a Nexus first because he would straight up die. Extractor trick to get a 10th drone. The Overlord on the way. This will just be six lings and then a hatchery, I, I imagine. Um, whether he continues to produce lings from there or not, it's completely up to his uh, discretion. If you feel like maybe you can get some lings in, you can slip by. Might be a good idea to continue to make lings, but for the most part, probably just halt on three sets because you're already sacrificing a lot of economy. Try to do a run by and then just follow up with some serious droning. Let's see if he builds more lings here. I'm gonna start a drone, so. Most likely just going to rely on the six lings to pressure. Try to slip into the main. Deal some damage to this gateway. Maybe pick off the pylon if an opportunity arises. He's able to get us around on any of these zealots. He might have such an opportunity. Nexus starts. Second zealot is about to come out. Probe Zealot combo needs to get on this ramp perfectly. Got a block. Ooh. The Lings will slip by. Doesn't target the right Ling there, unfortunately. And they are now in this main base getting the first probe kill. This is a problem for John Hoon. It's not the end of the world, but it is a serious issue that he's going to have to deal with. Would be a good idea. Yeah, he builds a pylon behind the minerals. That's a very good choice. In a situation like this, you don't want to leave too many locations for these lings to run by. If the lings run down here, 
and he manages to trap them it's such an easy cleanup it's crazy you can just park the two zealots there uh or come down and just start hitting them oh wait, these you can actually slip by he, he misplaced that <laughs> so that's supposed to be in that in the crack there uh the links are not supposed to be able to slip through forge is gonna start one zealot heading across the map this can get a little complicated but he's already got five lings here in the natural so even without control these lings will win making sure to block that zealot from running by into the main is very important third base on the way one ling goes down in this main base natural is being pressured but lings are already trying to surround this zealot another zealot going to be sent in while these lings are busy looking for some kills hasn't been able to get anything thus far one zealot gonna run by here into the main base but with links on the ramp he will be able to block that this does get very complicated guys i can tell you from experience keeping links alive in the main dealing with zealots out on the map and trying to chase down a zealot here in the middle pretty tough man does manage to get the pretty decent surround there in the natural killing off the zealot behind the mineral patches here comes some more zealots now those have been spotted by the lings at the front you have to hit your overlords you have to build lings at the same time he has been supply blocked uh-oh uh-oh this could go very bad hjs with the ill-timed supply block might be in quite a lot of trouble you can see he's stuck on 27 of 27 and he hasn't started an overload there it goes it starts just now but this is so painful i can't tell you guys how many times this exact thing has happened to me look he builds two buildings in his main two creep colonies and cancels them so that he can get a couple more drones in production because he just needs he needs to get his production rolling and he just can't build anything he's got so much money there we go he starts a bunch more drones those seven drones should have been started a long time ago unfortunately for him the supply block is brutally painful he finds this zealot over here this is a really really good pickup finding that zealot massive because if that landed in this mineral line and the links were over at the front he would have been in so much trouble hatchery starts in the natural zealots are making their way across the map ling defense is all that hgs can pull together for the moment so maybe enough links here i think the these zealots would win if it if they just take this fight and so it's a little bit unfortunate he's not going across and just taking the the trade but might be better to wait for the plus one for the speed as well he's coming out with the corsair going to get an overlord kill lings are trying to bait here comes some more and you take a pretty good trade here all right good surround overall but the zealots will still win this fight that's a few too many zealots to deal with just pure ling first overlord has gone down flyer carapace on the way Things are getting a little squirrely right now for HJS. He's having a hard time. I can tell you, I've been in a situation similar to this a thousand times on the ladder, and it's very taxing. It's a double-edged sword running by into the main base of the Protoss player because they can just send a couple of zealots across the map and without much control cause a lot of damage if you're not paying attention. By just sending their zealots into the main and the mineral each mineral line you have to control your lings properly surround that make sure that you have the overlords and drones making that you need while making enough zealots or enough zerglings to hold uh, they attack everywhere at the same time there's so much going on it's a very difficult task some mutas are finally out on the map uh, combined with these lings should be able to stop the zealot attack from dealing too much damage he's trying to target some drones during this fight as well but i think this will get cleaned up pretty reasonably by hgs a run by here into the main base at the same time as that attack is going on at the third gonna claim some of these lives the drone lives 
they do matter quite a bit in fact they're gonna be taken down oh the mutants need to get to their job get over here stop this zealot arrest this man he's got two kills not exactly a mass murderer but it is quite an annoyance a menace to society there we go he gets another drone over at the third base five hatch hydra is going to be incoming actually we don't even have a hydra list then, do we oh we do have a hydra den but we don't have hydra upgrades armor bermudas is all we have so it looks like hjs just going to pull the trigger on an all-in so many scourge are coming up and quite a bit of mutas are going to be hitting this main base here we go diving in now there is one archon Scourge are going to come in and hit this from behind, though. Wow, a lot of damage on those skirt, uh, on those Corsairs, but with two remaining and three cannons, these four very bruised Mutalists are not going to be able to close the deal. He goes ahead and starts his upgrades. He did not wait for Flyer Carapace. Might have been a bit of a mistake from HJS. Maybe just continuing to build up Mutas and Scourge and waiting for that upgrade to come online. Might have been a better maneuver, but it seems like he's going to go for part two. More and more Mutas are being banked and Scourge are being remade. So with the number of Corsairs that died during that fight, maybe just maybe he can come in kill all the corsairs and overwhelm the position here's an archon waiting at the third base ready to repel any straight up mutalisk attack and so he will turn around bunch of hydras on the way but these hydra upgrades are quite late we've already got plus one armor is about to finish as well and plus one attack for these uh hydras is just starting coming in for some harassment a few probes are gonna fall there is no storm just yet. It's almost done, and there it is. Storm is now available. And so diving in would be a dangerous move. He may be rotating around to attack into the, th the main base once again. But it seems like Jan Hoon is pretty well locked down on all of his bases another evo chamber begins lurker aspect on the way i think we're going for the long game now hjs has realized he's probably not going to be able to kill he's probably not going to be able to push john hoon off of this third base either even if he non-stop makes hydras from this point forward and tries to overwhelm the position it's unlikely he'll be able to make that work and so he is going to switch things up into a massive late game. He's going to take this base in the front, lurker everything up, lurker up all the high grounds, and try to get into Hive, I believe. That should be the plan. Armor on the way. And so, yes, he is going for that late game tech. You're not going to, for example, start an armor upgrade as a Zerg player while going for some sort of all-in. The armor is going to take a long time to complete. Wow, he just started Groove Spines. Okay, so he he went for Hydra Speed and then Lurker. Now into Groove Spines. HJS is going to make a ton of Lurkers. And hopefully he'll have enough ground defenses to hold back John Hoon to make us, uh, to give us a longer game. But there is a potential for John Hoon to just bust through before all of this is up and operational. We do have lurkers at the front now. This is a pretty serious army that's moving out. We have about four storms, three storms maybe, in this army. One High Templar gonna be left at home. Okay, he's gonna bring that along as well. Pushing back these Midas. They are gonna do very little against the Protoss army at this point. I don't think we have observers, do we? This might be the first observer that's about to pop out. Yeah, I don't think he has one. So maybe he can't. Okay, there's the observer actually joining the army now. 
Can he push up this high ground? That it seems like a tough ask. It seems like a hard uh, thing to do. But he throws down a couple of storms. These Templar are gonna get picked off at the front. There are still a lot of Hydras behind this. Gonna cast some good storms on those. Things are starting to look bleak here for HGS. He's getting up onto the high ground. John Hoon taking this position. Now it's gonna be even harder to push up on this army. One more storm is gonna be ready here in about three seconds. And that might be the one to clutch it out. One more storm on this low ground. He kills the last lurker. Just pure Hydra and Ling Rally coming to the front is not gonna do well against this massive force of Dragoons and Templar rallying with Zealots as well. HGS taps out. John Hoon closes round number one with a win for China, putting a big point on the board. If they manage to win in round number two, that's gonna be King of the Hill round number two. If they can take that win as well, they'll take home the prize for this week. Uh, if not, Korea will push us into an ace match in round number three. Guys, stick around. We're going to jump into round number two. King of the Hill is coming right up. Round number two, getting started with a rematch between John Hoon and HJS. HJS has already lost twice against John Hoon in this series. We're gonna be opening with a gateway expansion once again. John Hoon scouting in the wrong direction, but it's fine. He's checking to make sure there's no Overlord coming this direction. As you can see, Overlord heading over the uh, 12 o'clock position. Had HGS been down here, that Overlord would have been here heading into his natural in just a moment. So John Hoon able to uh, redirect, sends his probe over to the top right-hand corner. He's going to find the 12 hatch from HJS. That's going to be a pretty good opportunity for John Hoon to get a little damage here. First Zealot going to be rallied across this map as the spawning pool starts. John Hoon knows that he can get in here and do some damage. So pressing the attack with this probe, trying to get a few little hits off on some of these drones might give him a better opportunity, a better chance of picking them off a little bit later with that Protoss' Zealot. Two hits from a probe and two hits from a Zealot will kill a drone, but you know there will be some healing in between when the probe gets this damage and when the Zealot gets here. But if you can put you know four or five hits on the drone, there might be an opportunity to two-shot with the Zealot trying to slow this down, HGS. Getting in front of this Zealot, trying to poke it a little bit, trying to stop it from coming directly into his main. Doing a pretty decent job of that, but here comes that Zealot now. Three sets of Lings are on the way. Will he go directly behind the Mineral Patches, or is he willing to jump into this Mineral Line and try to get some kills? One hit so far, two hits. He just needs one more probe hit. No, he needs two more probe hits. Looks like the probe wasn't able to connect and the Zealot will hide behind the mineral patches. A little bit unfortunate there for John Hoon. Pretty good surround. No pull on that Ling that was being attacked, but still a pretty reasonable cleanup behind those mineral patches. It's tough to dislodge a Zealot quickly from that spot. So I think he's done a pretty decent job of this. Second Zealot's gonna get two kills on these links. Maybe a third? Not quite. Well done getting rid of this. HGS has built quite a few links, which is advantageous for John Hoon. Even though he lost the two Zealots, he forced out a lot of links. And he forced some lost mining time as well. So I think he's gonna be fine with that. Heading back home, just going to set up this wall. Third Zealot's about to pop. That'll hold this wall. Cannon starts. But we might take some damage on this gateway. The damage on the gateway could be a bit of a problem. He's going to come out to try and fight this. Oh boy, that Zealot almost got caught there. That would have been a nightmare situation. Managed to pull it back just barely in time. Ling's going to go to work on this gateway again. John Hoon reacting very quickly, but maybe sooner than he needs to. 
We don't have to pull the trigger or coming come out and fight this until it becomes a really difficult situation until the the gateway gets quite low and he will just come out and fight Ling speed is not on the way instead I see a Hydra stand in the production tab Hydras are going to be coming out here he starts Ling speed and then cancels it starts muscular augments afterwards I think we're going to completely hold this with Ling's and then try to switch into some Hydra play more links are being made, but John Hoon's going to send his Zealots back home, not wanting to throw those away just yet. One Zealot has broken off and is making its way over here towards the third base. This could actually be the big scout of the game. A very nice move here for John Hoon. What he sees in this third base may or may not tip him off to the fact that Hydralists are coming. He sees drones popping. And how many do we have in this base? Five. Five total drones here at the third. That's not really going to tip off John Hoon to what's going on. He is not going to figure this out, but he will be sending four zealots over towards the natural. Let's see if he can get in and see some hydralis popping. Yeah, hydras are going to pop out now. Lings are coming to the front. He didn't see the hydras just yet. He's going to run away from this fight with the lings. And that actually might be a mistake because if he was to just take this fight and try to break off. Okay, he sees the Hydras now. Hydras are going to come forward to try and help take this out on the high ground. It's a really big moment here because John Hoon knows that he needs a whole lot of cannons back at home. He's only got moments here to to, to build them. Just pure Hydralist production coming out of HJS. He's got quite a few drones at the third though. So this doesn't have to be an all-in. He should be throwing down another hatchery in just a moment extra hatchery over here at the natural it's gonna be the choice cannons are just about finished up so john hood should hold six cannons that's good enough i think we can keep the wall alive as well although hydralis range is about to finish it might be a good idea to just start building a couple of forges in the main there's a good chance he'll be able to hit this uh, forge with the proper angle. And with only two zealots in the wall, how are you going to slow this down? I just, I don't see it happening. John Hoon, time to rebuild some forges, buddy. You're going to have to let this go. He's starting to move forward with the zealots, tanking a little bit of damage. It's not the... Not slowing him down the most right now. We've still got three Hydras hitting this. HJS eventually going to pick this off. Oh, looks like we had one kill on this Corsair. Not able to get much more than that. Still flying around, still looking for some damage. But there it is. It goes down. Pretty annoying stuff because... There's an evolution chamber on the way for HJS. The big sacrifice that you make when you go for a Hydralis but bus like this is actually the upgrades that you're going to be delaying because you don't have your drone saturation like drones are one thing you've still got your hatcheries coming up they're a little bit slower but they will come up eventually and then you can really pump out drones quickly and get up to the proper saturation you can't catch up quickly with upgrades upgrades take a lot of time and if you're able to snipe the upgrade of your opponent, that buys you the time that you need to get your upgrades rolling. And he'll actually have the upgrade ahead of where Protoss has his upgrade, which is fantastic. We have a Spire on the way. No Overlord speed just yet. That'll have to be researched here soon. Very important to get that Overlord speed in order to get a fourth base out. Going up to 43 workers. And in fact, around 45 is the correct number on three base. I'm curious to see if he wants to take a fourth uh, sooner rather than later. Third gas is coming. The double forge is now rolling back at home for John Hoon. But again, behind on upgrades. Never a good feeling as a Protoss player. In fact, we could have 
HJS immediately gone for Carapace and gone directly into Hive. And then you can just stay ahead on Carapace upgrades for the rest of the game. And your opponent can never two-shot your Lings with Zealots. That way you can just build Lurker and Ling. Immediately go into just full-on Lurker Ling production and your army is just going to be extremely strong. You never have to do this mass Hydra phase. Uh, it doesn't seem like HGS wants to go that route, though. He doesn't want to go super late game uh, immediately. He prefers to uh, do this transition a little bit slower. Going to add on 10 more drones, going up to about 60 drones total. Could be adding another hatchery here in a moment, but he's going to get the mineral only online first before spreading out in different directions. He's got some mutas here at the front. And did he get a Templar? I think he might have picked off one Templar. There wasn't a whole lot of Templar to go after in this front line. I didn't, ex I didn't expect him to reveal this tech so quickly. And he only produced five mutas. Which is a little bit surprising to me. Only making the five is a, gr a great number for harassment. But diving onto Templar, it's just, it's not that strong. Yeah, one kill total for all of these mutas. And I'm not sure exactly what the plan is for these. We already have the Dark Archon with Maelstrom and the spell is ready. So if this was like a massive, it just, it doesn't really make sense to me. Why are we going for lurkers and mutas at the same time it tends to be one or the other now a lot of links are popping out and plus one is starting to come here plus one armor on the way time to get a third evolution chamber as well or yeah we've got two one of them's not working hjs Building up into a very strong army, adding a lot of lurkers into this force. But I don't think he can stop this fourth base. I don't really see it happening. This fourth should come up for Jonhun, and that means a fifth needs to be started here soon. HJS will have to expand out even further. And he did get the hive going. So we will get uh, more attack upgrades. Oh, wow. He just left this nexus with nothing. That's a, that's a shock. I don't know why John Hoon thought that that was a good idea. To just let the nexus go down like what he just did. This pretty mobile force of Ling Muta. Getting some value where I don't think it should have. Like Ling Muta at this point in the game is a very weak composition. HJS going to take center right, which is a, a decent option. It's the base that usually Protoss will try to take. They try to move over here and take this base. Uh, but if you get it preemptively... And you have a bunch of stuff on that high ground. It might make it very difficult. Oh. There we go. Maelstrom. The lesser known, the not very often seen ability of the Dark Archon. There's another Maelstrom to follow it up. Everything going to die. But a huge counterattack is making its way over to the third base. While HJS has allowed all of that to get cleaned up. He's going to dive right on top of this third. And he may, in fact, be able to kill it off. A lot of lings, a lot of lurkers getting up here onto this high ground. The probes will be immediately evacuated. The nexus down at bottom center is just about done. Plus, we have cannons and zealots over here. So, maybe... Oh, God. John Hoon is going to go for the counter. What is he thinking? He's going to dive right in against this. And all the rallies coming out of HJS are just going to surround and kill this very important dragoon force. It seems like... John, who got a little bit flustered during that counterattack, he will lose, I think, his entire force. A lot of units coming back from the front line. HGS going to surround 
and cut off these dragoons in their retreat. A lot of these lurkers are going down. Pretty hilarious. Um, dragoons just backing up and hitting old position and all the lurkers died. Maybe like four or five lurkers running forward. Trying to get in the way of these dragoons and they all just got gunned down immediately. This dragoon force still making a run for it. This is a, a marathon, not a sprint. He's just going all the way down to bottom left. HS did a pretty good job of cutting that off, but he's trying to do a counterattack, and I think it may be an ill fated counterattack. He lost most of the complexity out of his army, and he's now behind in supply. The upgrades are looking pretty good. They could be a lot better. And in fact, they will be a lot better in about a minute. He's about to get a very big boost with upgrades finishing, including armor and melee and range attack. Still falling back. John Hoon not respecting the amount of army that HJS had at this point. He's trying to push forward where I think it would have been much better to sit on the high ground and just wait for these other two bases to come online. He finally taps out as HGS surrounds that army. Damn, that was... That was unfortunate. I don't know where all the reinforcements were for John Hoon. Maybe another mistake of just not macroing during that attack? I'm gonna go back a little bit and see when that big fight took place. Up in the top left. Was he actually macroing during this? So we're at 13, 13 minutes. He's not building anything except for four cannons. And let's just take a look at what happens during this fight. Is he macroing? He should have Templar and ev everything rallied out to the front here. All of these gateways rallied to the front. A big macro round coming out to deal with this counterattack. He just wipes out a big army of hydra or of muta and ling a few hydralis in there as well but during all this big macro cycles hitting for hjs he brings it all to the front and breaks this base i tell you what if you have all of these dragoons on the high ground and another six or seven zealots and a couple templar which he definitely had the money for but really wasn't producing. He could have held this at least long enough for this army to get back and get a flank on that army coming up this high ground. But because he wasn't making Templar during that fight, because he wasn't macroing very well at that point in the game, he gets overwhelmed here on the high ground and he makes the probably the worst decision when it comes to losing this base. He could just give this up run the probes to the base at six o'clock and bring the army back maybe try to pincer attack this force on high ground i mean it's it's not great to fight up the high ground against lurkers but that's quite a bit of investment from hjs that's so many lurkers there's not really a good place to counter attack look at how many forces are waiting at each of these bases for a counterattack like that. It's a very good position for HJS. Yeah, a couple of storms on this as it comes up the hill. It's so hard to break cannons when there's storm available. But because there wasn't that storm and because he decided to turn around and run, run from this position, if he comes to the back of this, Pincer attacks this army, I think he can wipe this out, retake this base, and we're only one base behind the the Zerg player at that point. It's not a bad position to play from at all. But all the upgrades were coming online right as this was going on, right as this attack is coming in. He's fighting on multiple different fronts at the same time. He's kind of letting his army just wander forward. You can see the Dark Archon just heading right into the middle of all of this. And this is way too much complexity in the army to just let go of these this many dragoons all at the same time getting chased down like that is so painful the trade wasn't that bad throwing down storms on the incoming army but losing all of these dragoons 
kind of the the end of the line for John Hoon. Well, he played a very reasonable game. He won two games in a row versus HGS, but he finally gets his revenge. HGS puts a point on the board for the Korean squad in round number two. It's king of the hill, so he will continue on. Who will the Chinese send out next to try and take on the Zerg monster? Thong Zhe gonna be sent out against HJS CVZ. You know, Feng Zhe in Chinese. It's kind of like Feng Le, which is crazy. Ni Feng Le Ma, it's like, are you insane? So we could call Feng Zhe like insanity. Maybe that would be his English name, his English uh, battle net ID, something like that. So Insanity, aka Feng Zhe, up here in the top right hand corner. That's actually a really good battle ID. Insanity? I might steal that. Change my name. No more say NSC. I'm now Insanity. Let's go, boys. HJS down here in the bottom right hand corner. It's like, uh, I'll only play Crazy Zerg and I'll be called Insanity. It'll be fun. All right, nine pool. Coming from Feng Zhe. Just gonna go ahead and put the pressure on early. This is an over pool from HJS. A bit of a counter to the build of his opponent. Doesn't mean that you win automatically, but it can be an auto win if your opponent doesn't find a way to leverage the earlier gas geyser to get a quicker speed like if they get the speed and they don't utilize it then you're just gonna have a little bit more mineral income and you're gonna have a quicker hatchery in the natural Eventually, you're going to get ahead of your opponent. Oh, he's going to go for layer. Both players going for layer, actually. And so... Even layer timing. A few more lings right now for Feng Zhe, But actually, if you take a look at the ling count overall... T exact... Identical ling count on either side and one more drone okay one more drone actually popped out huh would you look at that as they scout each other Fung's are gonna make a couple of drones try to even this out a little bit got a drone on the way now for hjs as well he's gonna go up to 11 and both players are keeping an eye on what's popping out of the eggs seeing the drone you can make a decision and am I gonna pop drones as well or am I gonna just keep building lings and try to go all in or try to get damaged with the lings Ling speed about to finish up for either player HGS coming across the map but again equal completely equal in the number of lings either player has produced spire on the way on both sides And I don't think we're going to have an engagement here just yet. Oh, wow. Thinking about coming down for a hatchery. Is he just going to place it in the main? Yeah, I think that's a prudent decision. Good idea here. Trying to set up a wall, but it's not the greatest wall you've ever seen. The Chinese, they should be good at this. You know they build walls very well. Let's Let's see. If they can keep the Mongols at bay. Or at least take a good trade against the Mongols anyway. Now that's a pretty decent wall. That's going to be hard to get through. It's not like you can't break something like this. But the fact is you just don't want to break it. Because you're going to lose more lings. And you're not going to end up feeling good. What I like to do is actually send one ling to go and hit one of the lings that's attacking the egg. And sometimes you can get a kill on one of these one of these uh attacking lings because the 
uh, opponent is just going to be on hold position mostly. Oh, he's just going to try and come down? Oh, wow, he's kind of ruining this. Oh, man. What are you doing? Why did we try to come down this ramp? That was insane. We only had to wait for a few more seconds and we wouldn't have lost anything. Oh, he gets a drone. Oh, man. That seems crazy to me, guys. We do have two hatcheries where our HGS only has one. So there is an advantage in overall larval production. But he's going to lose an overlord. He's got Scourge coming. He's just going to take this fight. Okay, this is crazy. He's just going to go for the kill. Which I'm not sure he can make it happen. He has five mutas to f six mutas. Five mutas and two Scourge against six mutas. That should be an easy win for HJS. He's going to come in. Here comes the Scourge. Splitting the Scourge onto these mutas. He's going to get the moving shot. Forcing them to run away. He gets the connection on the Scourge as well. The Scourge. More Scourge coming in. One of them got sniped down, but he's going after this. Oh, man. Can he actually get another hit with the Scourge? I don't think so. He will be driven back. Four mutas to just two. He doesn't get the moving shot, though. That's critical. No moving shot. For HJS. HJS can continue to produce. He is lacking on overall larva, though. Whereas our red Zerg has the opposite problem. Just enough larva, but not enough minerals and gas. He needs to pop out some drones so that he can saturate these patches and make use of these, this larva by producing a bunch of lings. They can come across the map and start to deal damage. You can see that HGS is aware of that positioning. He knows that he's going to have less lings. He has access to less larva. So he immediately builds a sunken colony. Very, very intelligent play. Big brain stuff from HGS. He's just going to focus on only making airy units. And trying to take this fight as efficiently as possible. He knows exactly his advantage and disadvantage. Did he just fly right by that? Neither person saw each other? I think that Fungza saw that. I think Fungza saw that coming in. And he decides to just fly on past. He's going to hit the mineral line, though, later than his opponent. That's not a good sign. Look at how many drones are going to be killed before Fungza even hits. His opponent's base, so many drones are going to go down. I think every drone will fall in the end. Only three drones remain. Four for Feng Zhe. Going to take this fight now. As the Scourge come up, the Mutas are going to lead the fight. But both players back away. Unreal. What is going to happen from this position? See, four drones to three. We've got way more mutas. 10 mutas total for HJS. How many for Fungza? Seven. So three less mutas on the Red Zerg's team. He's producing one more drone. A fourth drone did pop out for HJS. These are really difficult uh, decisions to make at a point in a game like this. It's so hard to make that call. Okay, I'm going to make one more drone right now. You might just lose the game before that drone can ever pick up enough value. Enough minerals to make itself even worthwhile. I'm going to dive in here. Taking the fight pretty well. HGS, I think, has out microed these mutas and scourge to the point where this game is going to end. HJS has done it. He took a pretty rough situation and made it work for him. I'm really questioning the decision of Feng Zhe from this wall in that he had. The Great Wall of China crumbled at our Chinese player's whim. He just dove down the ramp for what seemed like no reason. He knows he's going to have more lings eventually. And he had Mutas about to pop out. 
if he hadn't lost that drone would he have gone across the map and taken that early fight or would he have sat back been a little bit more conservative you know added a few more drones made sure that he had the superior ling count the superior uh unit count and then tried to take the fight maybe i felt like he had a bit of desperation felt a bit of desperation when he lost that one drone and he just kind of went for it uh, after the overlord died i don't know guys what do you think about this game let me know in the comments pretty gnarly one pretty nutty one either way and a great zvz standard zvz if i've ever seen one we're gonna jump into our next game with hjs continuing to stand at the top of this hill can anyone topple our king let's find out guo chen gonna be sent out next i was kind of disappointed in his overall performance last game i didn't think it was anything too special uh, he played against hbq in an earlier match and uh well this is his time to redeem he can take down hjs or at least put out a really good game i'll have my opinion changed about him fellow caster commentator from china guo Qian. i do definitely want to see him succeed but that last game was um pretty one-sided we'll say that hjs on fire on a hot streak blazing down this ladder he's already gonna go ahead and throw down his tw uh oh wait nine hatch okay a nine hatch coming out of hjs and a probe heading directly over to potentially cannon rush him oh boy the cannon rush could be pretty nasty although you do get a lot of lings with a nine hatch nine hatch can pop out a ton of lings very very quickly Bring down the pylon at the last possible second he will get the cannon started he has another probe on the way this cannon rush is looking good so far starts a second cannon here at the back he has to cancel though to get his probe out second and third cannon on the way as a couple of probes are going to come forward start to deal damage to these creep colonies some drones are going to be pulled to try and help out here at the front doing any damage to this is going to be hugely impactful it's the sunken colony is not a very beefy unit at all he's got a target down this sunken right here if he gets it below a certain number of hp he can almost one shot it he will get the kill on that but the cannon has been killed as well. The double sunken will be enough to prevent this cannon rush from being effective. And with this much of a overall investment into the cannon rush, Guo Chen is going to be hurting bad back at home. He is very slow on his hatchery this hat or uh, on his nexus excuse me the hatchery was extremely quick with the nine hatch and hgs is getting his drones mining very very fast expedient third hatchery as well and lings are going to try to break through here oh nice block very nice block with that probe fancy footwork Picking off quite a few of those links and deterring a future run by. And now, Guo Chen will stabilize. He's going to get his assimilator online. His gas will start to roll in. However, I'm not feeling his position. HJS is looking great. As his gas is going to grab another creep colony here at the front oh no okay just for the cancels i guess he was slow on the overlord it seems a little bit wasteful to build two creep colonies to get a couple of extra drones going 
only seconds before the overlord pops but i don't know that could just be me hydroden on the way doesn't want to mess around this game gonna build a bunch of hydras maybe just to kill the forge maybe to kill you it all depends on whether Guo Qian picks up on this or not. If he pushes out with some zealots and is able to figure out what's going on, then maybe HJS will have a bit of a different plan in mind. But right now it's looking like a Hydra bust. More lings are being made. He's ready for these zealots that are moving out now. Gateway in the natural. Stargate in the main. Has a little time before that first Corsair comes out. Guo Qian faking it. Pump. Fake. Heading across the map. And now heading back towards his natural. Links have been made to deal with those zealots. They are not necessary. But they may still be useful. In stopping this probe from scouting everything. Probe going to come from an awkward angle. But it's just as well prepared going to be able to chase this down and it's unlikely the hydra attack will be scouted fourth hatch on the way he's made a little bit more than 973 so he has a good transition out of this kind of semi all in but he is going to be able to force quite a response a good number of cannons coming up for Guo Qian. And I honestly, I really like this play from HJS. If you are even a little bit sloppy or a little bit off with the way that you're uh, responding to what HJS is doing, Protoss is going to get way far behind. He will be able to get the gateway and his forces are already positioned to kill the forge for the part of... Guo Chen, he already has a second forge in the main and has begun the ground weapon. So he's not going to be behind in upgrades like his opponent or his uh, teammate was in the last PVZ. See, the evolution chamber starts, but this plus one is getting close to halfway complete. He might even have a second forge. It doesn't seem like it, but it is a possibility. Wow ton of gateways coming up now he's gonna hit a big plus one timing attack try to bowl over hjs while he's transitioning out of this bust or out of this fake bust this uh, wall kill at the front he's throwing down six hatcheries he's still pumping drones but the gateways are finishing up and a huge amount of zealots are going to come out momentarily. Six zealots already on the field. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gateways to produce zealots now. This zealot number is going to skyrocket in a moment. 41 drones. I think he's going a little too hard in the overall drone count. Going up to 43, 44 is about to pop out. He will be upgrading Lurker. But this is all transitionary tech that's not going to be online when the gateways uh, finish pumping out the zealots. Once these zealots come out on the map, we're going to have like 14 tw to 20 zealots that are going to suddenly come running out. It's a bit dangerous. He's already pushing out. Maybe a tiny bit prematurely. But he's going to rally everything to the front and try to pull HGS apart. This is quite a good number of Hydras. Maybe a fight that Guo Chen should run from. Or he needs to get in here with these uh, Corsairs at the same time. Start to kill Overlords while this is happening. While the Zealots are making their trade, he needs to kill Overlords, but... There's a few too many Hydras. HJS has hit this macro a little bit too well. He already has the drone count he needs to sustain six hatch Hydra. And he's just pumping pure Hydra. I say that, but he's got three drones in production. Kind of funny. He's still managing to pump out drones during this, but I feel like he's just outplayed. 
Guo Qian. Guo Qian didn't take a lot of damage. He didn't have a really bad opener, I guess, getting shut down with the amount of investment he put into the earlier cannon, cannon rush slowed him down enough to where this just doesn't pack enough of a punch. HJS, had this been a completely normal opener, you know, with a, a forge and a nexus and a couple of cannons, or one cannon even, if he'd managed to get away with it, and then he goes into a play like this where HJS, you know, kills the wall and then uh, tries to make 47 drones, I don't think that's going to go well for him. I think the zealots can bowl that over, but because of the pain in the early game, the failed cannon rush, it seems like Guochen just doesn't have the muscle to push HJS around at all. And now HJS has the fourth base. He can make a second hatchery down there. He can make a round of drones. He's chasing down zealots, fighting them around the map. He's got Lurker set up over by this fourth, just in case there was a Zealot run by. These Zealots are going to get on top of a few of these Hydras, but Lurker's moving into position. Overlord's being chased right now. A third base may end up coming up for Gochim, but I have a feeling HJS is going to get in his macro mode. He has... Ventral sacks on the way. Interesting decision. Are we going to see Layer Man, HJS, go completely mad with just pure Lurker Hydra drop on four base? That is a play you can do. That is something that is possible. Some... Overlords load up and head towards this main. Not a lot of defenses over there for Gochen. He could be in a lot of trouble. There's no spire for HJS. A big gaping hole in his game right now. Which could be easily taken advantage of. Oh, two more lurkers heading in this direction. This could be a huge multi-prong attack while the Hydras are pushing in. Oh, dude, this is so big. HGS going to go for both mineral lines, dropping Hydras and Lurkers over here in the main base, drawing back the army. Could go in for an attack, but he's going to bring these Lurkers over to the natural. Here we go. Big Burrow dropping right on top of these. Wow. 15 kill Lurker right there. Absolutely monstrous damage. Finishing off so many probes. Another big line of probes goes down. Three more probes fall. Where's this lurker? Oh my gosh, this one over here. 12 kills! Wow, 12 kills on this one. So many went down. 19 probes remain, guys. This game is over. Bo Chen just took so much damage. He has no legs to stand on he's got hardly any income and yeah hjs can do whatever he wants from this point but i assume what he wants to do is just build units no point in doing anything else the only thing that could kill him right now is just one massive counter attack if it gets on top of the natural and you're not able to dislodge maybe there's a way that Guo Chen could make that comeback, but I just, I don't see it as possible. Yeah, there's way too much. And with all the reinforcements coming up, Lurker's going to burrow on top of everything. A bunch of storms get laid down, but it doesn't matter. This army is going to be completely swallowed up. You need the most money storms imaginable to beat this man. And HGS takes another victory, completely swallowing up that army. Excellent multi-pronged attack. To his credit, Guo Chen did pull a lot of his probes away, but wasn't able to deal with these two drops effectively and prevent masses of probes falling. GG, man. What a crazy attack that was. I bet that beats a lot of people on the ladder. I bet that's a ladder killer. That build, what we just saw from HGS. Going for 
mass layer man right into a fourth base and then just start dropping start dropping in both bases with uh, lurkers and hydras yeah i bet that gets him a lot of ladder points anyways guys three wins on the board only one more win match point here in round number two already hjs seems unbeatable even though he lost two times in round number one nobody else can take him down there's one more Chinese player. He's got a final shot. Xiao Shuai in the background. ZVZ. Can he take him down? Can he stop the rampage of HJS? Let's go find out. Xiao Shuai versus HJS. Match point for the Korean squad. ZVZ. Always a wild matchup. Two monkeys in a phone booth fighting with knives. Is how I've heard it explained. But in a lot of ways, it's more like a poker match. Rather than being given a hand, you kind of choose your own early hand. You choose your original hand and then Try to figure out what your opponent is doing and what they have. There's bluffing, there's some trading, and of course, there's always all ins in this matchup. Guys, I'm sipping a bit of umeshu here, a little bit of plum wine, getting ready for bed. Tomorrow is fasting day. So I won't be eating for the entire day and I'm going to be streaming for a lot of it. I'll be playing some Brood War and maybe some other games as well. We'll see. We'll see how I do. Sometimes it's hard for me to, to play for the entire day. Just pure Brood War. If you know what I mean. It, it, it's tough. It can be tough anyway. Nine pool with speed from HJS. Whereas we've got some sort of overpool build. And he may be going directly into lair. Which doesn't fare well. This doesn't bode well for Shao Shui. It doesn't fare well against the nine pool speed. We're going to see the lings coming. And it, Shao Shui knows exactly what this timing means. It means he's in quite a bit of trouble. He may have to pull drones. I'm pulling two or three drones. There's no shame in it right now. I'm going to come out and try to fight. Pretty good trade for Xiao Shui, honestly. Getting quite a few extra hits. But he's way outnumbered at this point. He needs to back up this ramp. Wait for a few more reinforcements. His reinforcements are going to be a lot faster. Because he's so much closer. But HJS has finished his Ling speed now. Coming up the ramp, he gets a kill for free. Now there's an even worse deficit of lings that Xiao Shui has to deal with. He's going to come down this ramp, try to take this fight, but it really looks like HJS is getting the better of it. Drones come down to fight, but without the ling support, we're going to end up losing a lot of these drones, and ling speed is about to finish up soon. The drones are not doing a good job, not really fighting in concert with the lings, getting picked off. Now just eight drones remain. Two more lings going to pop out of this natural, but the hatchery is mighty low and more lings are coming. This is a clear win for HJS and Xiao Shui taps out. There it is, guys. HJS pick the right hand in this game of poker. ZVZ is a hell of a drug. Look at this. HJS speedy wins here with the Ling speed first. Xiao Shui out of luck. And HJS going to push us to the H ace match. Is he going to be playing in the ace? I wonder if it's going to be him versus John Hoon again. The man who was able to take him down twice in round number one. Let's see which player each team opts to send out. The ace match. It's coming up next. The Chinese squad does indeed send out Zhuanhun, but he's met by HBQ. A bit of a surprise 
from the Korean squad. I guess that maybe... That Zerg player, what was his name? HJS? God, I just said it. HJS maybe not wanting to continue. Maybe he was tired. Maybe he didn't want to play another game. He did his job, though. Four wins in a row. Beating John Hoon and then every other player in the Chinese lineup. Very well done. It's all up to HBQ now to close out this series. PVT final. Let's see if HBQ can make it happen. I I don't know about you guys, but I'd be pretty butthurt if I was HJS. And I just ran through the entire squad. Uh, bringing us to this ace match and HBQ flopped. Nexus first from John Hoon. Risking it all on a sneaky quick Nexus. HBQ going to find this right off the bat. And so will we throw down a forge back at home? John Hoon could go for that. As he comes in, he sees the barracks. He sees the gas. He knows there's about to be a factory started for HBQ. First Marine is out. No forge just yet. John Hoon throws a pylon down at the front. There could be a forge coming. Cannon is a great response to a player who's constantly building Marines and maybe going for a bunker rush. You can see he's chasing the pro he's using the ch probe to chase this SCV. One thing we've seen from Flash recently on the ladder is he likes to build a bunker way outside the range of the Nexus and leapfrog bunkers towards this uh, Nexus to eventually pick it off. Ooh, one probe does go down, but he gets the Marine. Excellent defense so far from John Hoon. He did build the forge, so he will get a cannon. Bit funny to see the Photon Cannon built so far back, though. Can't the Marines hit the pylon without the cannon being able to reach them? That would be a, an insanely funny way to die. That would be crazy. That would be a hilarious way to die. Machine Shop with the add-on. Are we going to see the other follow-up we've seen from Flash recently? Which is immediately into tank and try to go for a siege push. I guess not. He pulled off of gas. He starts a CC. And so we're just going to go into a normal game with John Hoon in a bit of a lead. He's got one up over HBQ in this game. He didn't have to overcommit to the defense. He lost one probe only. And he got this Nexus up crazy fast. So he's going to be pumping out a lot of probes. He's already up to 26. He starts a second gateway and a third. He's expecting some sort of aggression out of HBQ to try and punish. And he wants to meet that aggression with just pure Dragoon numbers, which I can't blame him for. But on H for HBQ's part, he's actually just going into a more macro-centric play. He's realized, I'm probably not going to get anything done with this. Just going to go ahead, get my mines upgrade. I'm going to put some mines out in front of your base. Uh, I'm not going to let you trade well against my vultures. I'm going to make sure that you can't get an early third. Because that is the big benefit of having this very quick... Nexus first is that you can then get a third Nexus very quickly as well. Wow, just barely keeping these two vultures alive. Oops, gonna walk into that mine. Felt like he clicked this downwards, but it for some reason walked north. Took a weird pathing uh, turn there. John Hoon loses one of his early dragoons, and he takes another hit from another mine. Killing off one vulture, but 
damaging his goon pretty badly. Triple goon production. But I see no robo. He's going to come out. Try to take this third right now. At six minutes, it's a pretty well-timed third. HBQ has kind of failed to get a vulture into this position and prevent the Nexus from being thrown down. So instead grabbing a third of his own. Ah, I love it. This is the, sh the sharp method of dealing with Nexus first. Rather than putting on a lot of pressure, you instead throw down mines everywhere and then get a third of your own super quick. I didn't even see that third command center being built, but I love it. I think this is some genius level play that we've only really seen out of Sharp. And so I'm glad to see other players picking up on it. HBQ, going to use this to great effect, get himself ahead by doubling down on the overall macro and just going hard, going super hard into macro. You can see the robotics is very late, and that's one of the big deficiencies in the Nexus first play. When you go for Nexus first, you're going to have a late robo. Just the way it is. Super quick third base, but a very late robo. Not as quick as HBQ, though. This man went for the fastest third base imaginable with just two tanks and two factories. You should not be able to get away with this. The only reason that he can is because of the mines that were thrown out around the map and the lack of vision on the side of John Hoon. John Hoon gonna grab a quick fourth base as well. Throwing that down at about seven minute 30. Maybe even a little bit earlier. He's gonna have a very, very good economy here shortly, but HBQ is keeping up with him in basically every way. He has plus one on, uh, coming. He's going to start to throw down more factories soon. And he just has a lot of SCVs to work with. Look at that. 56 SCVs, 57 SCVs, keeping right up alongside the Protoss. Things are looking pretty decent for HBQ, I'll be honest. John Hoon handled things pretty well in the early game, but he ran into some mines. He got slowed down a little bit. And HBQ made sure that he wasn't able to scout, that he wasn't able to put on any pressure. And now John Hoon just sitting here on four bases. He doesn't have any idea what's going on with HBQ. He's not seen this space yet. And he, we're going to get his vision in just a moment as he makes his way over towards this third base. He still doesn't know about it. And now it will be revealed. John Hoon going to be a little confused about that bunker on high ground, but he'll know here in a moment what he's up against and how much he's allowed this Terran player to get away with. We've got a lot of factories coming up now. HBQ still, oh, doing some run by. Big run by over here. Going to kill like five, six probes maybe. A lot of kills on one of those vultures. 66 workers still a very good supply but we need to get a, a, a pylon wall over here maybe a couple of cannons as well can't be losing probes like that in a game we're already kind of behind in the overall macro uh, it's very scary if hbq gets his fourth base up as well so we might see them come to blows in just a moment as that fourth base starts to come up as HBQ splits his forces, he puts two tanks on this high ground. He is very low on the tank count. Four tanks on this high ground. He, he actually needs to bring the rest of his tanks back. He can't be leaving the tanks over on the fourth base when it's not even taken. And there's not even a CC up there. I'm going to bring everything back uh, over to the, the high ground. He doesn't kill that last tank in the background. So he won't be able to stay and punish more workers. Everything getting pushed back for John Hoon. HBQ gonna hold strong for now. That extra CC floating over. The fourth base will be taken. Factory count looking fantastic. Seven factories already. He'll be going up to like 10. 
Arbiter on the way. Stasis Field is the first choice in upgrades for John Hoon. He's going to continue to expand then. If he's going Stasis Field, he's not planning to go for Recall. He's planning to take fights with the army rather than harass the economy. And that means his economy needs to be bigger. It needs to be stronger. Vulture going to make its way in here. It doesn't stop the Nexus, though. That's really big. At least starting the Nexus is going to be huge for John Hoon. He may even get this Vulture, which is another big win. He can get up here on the high ground and start to throw down cannons, make it harder for Vultures to raid that area. Has another probe ready to take a base in the bottom right. Going to be expanding, mass expanding on his side of the map. First Arbiter is out. And Science Facility has started. So waiting to get to four bases before starting a Science Facility. It's such a different way of playing Terran uh, in the modern era than what we're used to from the past. But a few probes go down over here at the fourth base once again. Still failing to put down adequate defenses at this location, causing him to lose more and more probes, but... He has an adequate number to continue to produce, to continue to expand as well. We have cannons on this high ground. Really need some cannons to try and defend this area. Just down a mine, but the vultures will get up onto this high ground. Army's going to have to be all sent down to deal with this small force of vultures that's harassing him. Will HBQ take this opportunity to push forward? It seems like not. Instead, just going to sit, camp on the high ground, get his 2-2 started, add on even more factories. What are we at now? 8, 9, 10 factories. It's a perfect amount at this point in the game. Just mass out units and prepare for the eventual plus 2, plus 1 timing that he's going to have. Or plus 2, plus 2 timing that he's going to have, excuse me. Coming in once again. More harassment of this fourth base. I've said it again and again, but it's still true. Not having adequate defenses there is really hurting John Hoon. He's starting to move in. He's got max supply, thinking about doing an attack. This is such a sick, such a disgustingly good stasis right there. That would be just so brutal. Three HP on this Dragoon, that is crazy. You might as well run the Dragoon in and actually just kill off these Vultures with a uh, dragged mine. Oh, this mine. Oh, finally gets taken out. Some of the, those probes do survive. A few probes down here as well. One cannon, probably not going to be enough. You've got 2,700 minerals. What are we doing being shy about throwing down cannons at this point? More gateways going up in the bottom right. Absolutely necessary for this game to go on. If he wants to stand any chance in the late game. Oh, it's only 1-0. Oh, so it'll be 2-1. The timing that's coming up. Another CC being built. HBQ, he just doesn't want to attack, man. He just wants to play single player. Uh, with a little bit of harassment here and there. But mostly just building up and building up and building up. He's sending tanks to this high ground. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe he saw an Arbiter that might have been coming in. No. Don't see any. Arbiter over here almost has energy for a recall. I'm not sure if we have that recall upgrade finished yet. It's possible that we do though. Storm on the way. Templar are going to start incrementing out here soon. But for the moment, he's at 200 supply. Here comes the first recall of the game. Gonna be dropped right on top of all of these turrets. I'm gonna get the greatest connections with these mines. But the tanks coming up onto the high ground may be able to finish off everything. No, zealots are gonna do a pretty good job. Jumping on top of that. Whoa, that mine did so much damage. 
Killing off a whole bunch of workers. This is a very fruitful attack. And at the same time, main base is going to be recalled as well. This is going to get really difficult. And HPQ deciding to cut to the chase and just go for a massive counter. Ignoring or mostly ignoring the recall in his fourth base and trying to clear up with just minimum units and rallies coming out the attack into his main armories are going to start to fall and i mean we did finish 2-1 at least but this army over here oh a bit late on the re on the uh, scan there he does pick off the arbiter eventually and Looks like he will win this fight. A great stasis, though, cutting off a ton of DPS from this army. He's still scanning here, even though there's no Arbiter left. The surround on this army is actually getting pretty sick. He's going to completely kill this. Janhun bringing up army from all different directions. HBQ is un unseaging everything and going. He doesn't have a lot of open supply, though. Can he save these stasis units, these... Five tanks are so important. They're all at full HP. He has to keep them alive, and it looks like he may. Right in front of the rally point, these tanks are going to be saved. Critical tanks. Wait a minute. Army coming up from the south as well. Has to get the scan. He does, but it might be too little too late. Too many zealots here. A few too few vultures. Will he get... Some mines to connect. Oh, God. These mines. Oh. All the tanks going down. And HBQ is going to limp back home, licking his wounds. He's still got 61 SCVs. And I thought he had another floating CC. Oh, it's over here. He actually needs to float that away. Maybe back up to the top center. Got to take that base again. And I don't think he can take center left. Unless he can get up here before Janhun. And you know that getting mech units to go up a ramp definitely harder than just running zealots into position. So he's going to make a, a run for it with this command center. The slowest sprint you've ever seen in your life. More like a blimp than a fighter jet there. CC going to run away back up towards the main, but he needs to redirect it over to another base. We ac absolutely need a fourth. As the natural is about to mine out. Is he going to come up here and rebuild this? No, he finally decides to send it. But it's going to take a long time to get up here. And meanwhile, John Hoon could break this position on the high ground. He's going for the stasis. A bunch of tanks. Two tanks and two vultures get... Stasis out of this fight. Great storms on the left-hand side. Juan Hoon surrounding this army. And HBQ taps out. Juan Hoon taking it home here for the Protoss. It was a tight game. HBQ seemed to have it all. He had the upgrades. He had the army supply. It was a massive Terran force. But the double recall into the third or the fourth and the main base at the same time, plus a well-held counterattack. Not getting the st the scans that he needed, HBQ losing a lot of units and allowing so many clumped up units to get stasis. Things were pretty mad at that point in the game, and it's totally understandable, but John Hood did a better job of handling everything in the thick of the chaos. He comes out ahead and brings victory to this Chinese team. Guys, another excellent CKW week. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel as well. Donate if you can afford to. The Patreon link is in the description. I really appreciate it, guys. This is a lot of work to do a series like this, but I'm really enjoying it. I just have to break it up a bit. I can't do this every single week as well as the KCM. But since we didn't have KCM this last week, I figured I should definitely put one of these out. So I did. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll be back in a little bit. We'll see. Maybe next week. Maybe the week after that. We'll come out with uh, week number 84. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.